Okay, hi everyone. I am going to do a talk through today and something that someone was very interested about in my last video when I was talking about confidence is why I don't care about people. So I guess, yeah, if you don't know me, that probably feels like a very random thing to say and um, maybe very strange to say as well with so much confidence. So a lot of it started um, basically when I was in high school. Um, I actually think I refrain from repeating information about myself because for some reason I have this idea in my head that I share so much about myself that whoever continuously watches my videos will know all of the previous stuff I've ever said. So some of the stuff that I'm about to say now are things in one of the videos that I put out three years ago. <laughs> it's a video where I talked about being an introvert and why I don't need friends, but I will repeat some of that now. So I was basically very social um, in the early years of my life. Senior year of high school was when I stopped being social. So I used to have a lot of Asian friends in high school um, and we were just like a big group and we would always gather and hang out. And something that I noticed whenever we were hanging out is just how I feel like this is probably common in groups, but there's always like a select few people that are the most popular amongst everybody else, that everybody wants their attention, everybody wants to interact with them constantly. And then there's also a select few that are generally more in the background, less talkative, um, less desire to be the center of attention. And uh, as a result, they're kind of just, I don't know, ignored half the time. So I felt like the latter, but it's also because naturally I don't like being the center of attention. I also don't like to force myself into having that attention. And I feel like you need either of those traits to really blossom in a group setting um, and also feel satisfied. So I just, I think I just stopped caring or something like that. And senior year of high school, I pretty much just stopped being friends with all of them. And I was a loner. Uh, senior year of high school, I did have one friend who she eventually became my uh, roommate freshman year in college. But for her, uh, fun fact, she was probably the one who got me very passionate about movies because she really liked movies and we would watch a bunch together. We would talk about directors and actors together. But she was very unreliable and um, every time I tried to make plans with her, she would sound excited and be like, oh yeah, let's do this this Saturday. And, and then Saturday would come and I would be expecting us to have plans. And then she would always either cancel or just say, let's do it another time. Or she would just like lie, get out of it, stuff like that. And um, with repeated instances of that, I got really tired of it. So I cut her off. I have really had very, very, very few friend instances since that time of my life honestly and I can always just pinpoint when they happen so the next time I came across somebody was in college it was this girl Chinese girl she was in my one of my CS courses and she rode a motorcycle she is actually the one who got me into riding that's actually a topic I want to talk about in another video I don't think I've ever extensively talked about motorcycle as a general topic so sometime I'll do that. From what I remember, she lived with her uncle. She was an international student and her uncle bought her the new Honda uh, CBR 250. I believe it was the first year that Honda put out a 250 CC model. So I'm pretty sure during that time, there were not a lot of motorcycle brands that were putting out beginner bikes. Um, I think at the time only Kawasaki had a 250, but I'm not entirely sure. So anyway, she had a 250 and um, for my college, the way the campus worked is anytime you needed to just tr get, get transportation around campus, you had to take the bus. So if you were off campus, you would drive in, park in a lot, and then take the bus around campus. And I hated that, right? I don't like public transportation. I don't like waiting. I wanna just fucking get in my car and go. So what she would do is she would ride her motorcycle to the building and then um, afterwards she would give me rides back to my car. And 
I have never ridden on a motorcycle before. I hadn't even considered the thought of a motorcycle before because just based on my upbringing, like my parents aren't going to introduce me to that. Nobody they know is going to introduce me to that. So I just remembered finding the experience very, very interesting, very, very fun. And um, she was very willing to help me with my interest because like after a couple times of that, I was like, wow, this is really cool. I would love to get one of my own. Yeah, that, that's just what happened. But with her, she was also kind of similar in the sense where um, I just remember this one time. So I live off campus. So if I ever spend extra time on campus, then uh, I'm kind of like trapped there. You know what I mean? So there was this one time I think we had a class and then afterwards we agreed to meet at some sort of library place to work on a project. So um, I was expecting us to work on it right away, right? Because if we don't work on it right away, I have no purpose being on campus and it's waste. It's just a waste of time for me to be on campus. I don't like being on campus. Another thing that is very important to keep in mind, I hated school, hated, hated school so much that I didn't even go to graduation. The moment I got my degree, I was like, fuck school, I'm not dealing with it anymore. So yeah, just in general, like I live off campus if I'm putting extra time on campus, I want to make sure that I'm being productive at something. Otherwise, there's no reason for me to be there. So we agreed we were going to work on a project and then she went back. I think she was going to go back and like get some stuff or she went back to her apartment or whatever. And then she told me that she wanted to go get dinner with her roommate. And obviously that pissed me off because we had agreed we were going to work on the project. And then she's just like, eh, I'm going to go eat some dinner. So I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> So I waited a little bit on campus for her just to see, like, I think she said it's not going to take very long. I'll be there soon. So I waited a little bit. And then I guess as I waited, the more and more angry I got. So I just ended up uh, leaving her. And then she kind of texted me angrily about me leaving. And then I think after that point, maybe the next time we met up, I said some shit to her and made her cry. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I don't like dealing with shit like that. If you make a plan generally stick to it but like obviously that situation she probably didn't really understand my perspective of the whole like if i'm staying on campus there's really nothing for me to do so i don't want to just wait around for somebody after we had already agreed upon it um yes i'm very rigid about plans but i am just the type of person that thinks it's not very hard to stick to plans that you make or don't agree to do something if you are constantly changing your mind later because um, like when you're agreeing like eh, I, I'm not gonna really go into the whole like these specifics but that's just what happened I stopped being friends with her but honestly she was not suitable for somebody like me because um, I just remembered she would often be I'm not trying to be sexist but like she would just behave kind of like in a typical young girl way where she would tell me about some hot guy she saw at the gym, maybe talk to me about shopping. Shopping, that topic is kind of like give and take for me because I'll admit when I have my moments where I'm like, ooh, fashion, I have nobody to say that to outside of men and they don't understand that at all. So I would be like talking to Jose about like Chanel this, Dior this, Diane von Furstenberg this, um, freaking all of that stuff and he wouldn't know what the hell I'm talking about. So that part can be a little bit um, hard for me. But um, yeah, just in general, like I honestly, I have never been friends with somebody that would constantly tell me about some attractive person they saw. After that point on, that was like junior year of college. After that, um, I've been very lacking in friends, truthfully. And um, I also think from that point on, I've just been really rigid about who I keep in my life. So yeah, I might have really, really high standards for people. For me personally, that's not a problem because I would say it would be different if I was sitting here telling you that I'm lonely all the time and that I need companionship, but I don't. So the fact that I get rid of people sometimes a little easily is not actually problematic for me because I'm not unhappy. I'm actually very happy. I have realized as I've thought about it more in preparation for discussing this topic 
that I don't actually have a lot of interest in somebody else unless they constantly like make themselves apparent to me or if okay <laughs> I think one of the few traits that people can have that makes me very interested in them is if they're good at a video game and I say that because historically that has been those times where I find myself like really drawn to them, really attracted to them, um, even if I don't know a lot of information about them. So that is like the one minor time where I actually uh, find myself wanting to interact with somebody a lot. But outside of that, online or in real life, people can talk to me, um, we can be acquaintances, but I don't really feel a lot of interest in them unless they put a lot of effort in to spend time with me. Just because, um, I, I don't know, that's just how I've been. Like if I come across somebody new, I, I do find the chance encounter very interesting, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to go out of my way to want to spend time with you. I actually am not the type of person that meets somebody new. Uh, especially male and automatically in my mind think ooh this could be somebody that I could potentially date I never ever think that way let me just talk about a few encounters that I've had and uh, maybe it'll help you to understand like just naturally how I am let's just jump to um, when I was living in Bedminster I was living in a condo there and my dad had purchased the condo because I don't know, that was kind of crazy. My dad purchased the condo because I told him I wanted to get a dog. I wanted to get Riley, a husky. And in an apartment, it was very hard to find places that would take a dog that big. And all of the places that I was looking at that would accept dogs, and my parents came with me and they were like, what is this shithole? Like, please don't live here. So he bought that condo for me and um, I was living there. Most of the people in that condo area were older, which, didn't bother me obviously I just remember this one guy there that was on the younger side I don't know honestly how old he is I would say he might be late 20s or maybe early 30s I think I came across him once in the parking lot he struck up a conversation with me and then I guess we exchanged numbers honestly when it comes to giving out my number I don't give a fuck <laughs> but I have not had many encounters like that where they're just like, hey, what's your number, this, that. So anyways, he asked me for my number and then the next time we spent time together, we just went for a walk with Riley. I just remember during that walk that he did not strike me as somebody that I was truly compatible with. So this is actually one of the biggest things for this topic and I've spoken about it all the time. Compatibility is huge for me so so huge if i feel like i can't 100 percent be myself my whole personality if i can't make my stupid ass jokes i make a lot of stupid ass jokes i am super sarcastic i want to laugh a lot when i'm with somebody and with him i could just tell that we didn't sync up that way it just felt more like i was talking to a co-worker than somebody that could be a friend or even someone that i dated so Basically, after that one walk we did, it was like, I don't know, 30 to 40 minutes. I just pretty much decided I probably don't want to spend any more time with this person because I just don't see the point. He did end up like texting me a couple times to like, because during our walk, I probably mentioned to him I wanted to go to the gym more. I wanted to be more fit, exercise, this, that. And he would text me to go to the community gym that the condo had. He would text me, oh, Saturday night, you want to come over, drink and watch a movie? And I was just like, uh, no. <laughs> with him, um, I did like have to be fairly upfront with him because he kept inviting me and I was just like, no, please, no. Uh, so I just told him that like, yeah, I'm not interested. I don't want to spend time, whatever, something like that. And he was kind of the type of person that responded in a way that was like, I'm just trying to be a nice guy fuck that term nice guy he's like oh i figured everyone around here is so old and that you would maybe want someone younger to spend time with and i'm like ah, huh, whatever so that guy was very short-lived that experience did stick out for me just because i'll admit 
when it comes to any potential interaction that involves attraction or interest from somebody else, I am very, very naive, probably. I don't know if I would use those words actually because I know the potential is there. I just don't think about it. So for example, one of the guys, um, okay, so on Steam a couple years ago, my ex was somebody that I played a lot of Dota with, a lot, a lot of Dota with. I met him off Dota and he was probably actually one of my longest relationships. But anyways, he had a friend on Dota and his friend had friends. So we were just playing in five stacks and one of them found out I was a girl, added me, started talking to me. And yeah, in those situations, I could probably just be like, oh, this guy is obviously thirsty. Let me just like, but I never really like that just because I, I don't know. I don't really care. I know that he like the way he spoke and the way he behaved and acted, I was like, I should probably not entertain any of this. But sometimes I just don't care until the point that it starts to feel like it's intruding on boundaries. And then I'm just like, fuck off. So he, I think it was him. There's no way I would ask him to dinner. He asked me to dinner because he happened to be in San Diego. So I was like, okay, why not? So I went into that, obviously not considering it a date, but I would also, whatever. I don't know these like official things when it comes to when people ask you out for something. I don't like to just assume, okay? I don't like to assume. So we went to dinner and it was fine. There's always aspects of these things that makes me feel like I'm contributing to the outcome when I don't like to think that way. So for example, I mentioned that because at that time, I, I was still really into fashion. I liked to dress up, so I looked nice. I wore um, Valentino booties. Since then, I have sold those because they're very expensive. I wore like a jeans, I curled my hair, denim jacket, I had something on the inside, I looked nice. And I went to dinner, and honestly, talking with him wasn't really that bad. I think he was pretty funny at times. I could tell that he was a very inexperienced guy because he took a lot of signs out of my behavior as interest. Uh, some of it is cringe. I'm not going to talk about it too much just because I don't want to shame this guy too much. But so for example, some of the signs he took out of me being interested were me sending him a message late at night. And I, I'm not talking like messages like, Hey, I want to fuck. It's more like stupid random shit. Like, Hi, I'm awake at 11 to 1 a.m. and I'm sending you a message. No, it does not mean I want to fuck. I'm just fucking talking to you. So that was one. And another one, I think he was just like, oh, you were laughing a lot when we were together. And I'm like, I can't laugh without pretending like I want to fuck. So that is another sign. And just like a lot of the times, like I just, I, I feel like I just drastically even stopped caring and losing interest because yeah if someone is twisting a lot of the things that you do then eh, it's obviously not really worth it i do tend to approach a lot of things that way the next one that i want to talk about is actually one that was a pretty big conflict for me for a very long time because i really value this person i think he's a great person but compatibility wise I do not think we sync as well as I would have liked. So I moved here from New Jersey. I have, I had lived in New Jersey my entire life and had no thoughts of leaving just because like I was born there. I wasn't the type that was like, oh, let me leave the state. I can't wait to get out of here. I wasn't like that. I was just like, oh, I'm going to find a new job and just keep finding jobs in New Jersey. He is someone I met on WOW back in Burning Crusade, eh, I'll just say Wrath because I didn't start talking to him until Wrath. And he was um, in a guild, he was the guild leader of one that I was raiding in and I had seen his name around. So I talked to him a little bit back then, but somehow, um, what was it, like 2016-ish, um, we started talking again out of the blue and we would talk on a daily basis all the time. and. He gave me the idea to move here to San Diego where he resided 
just because I, I don't know how he plugged it to me, but just the whole weather thing, I think that really appealed to me because at the time I was struggling with Riley. She was a puppy. And yes, as a dog owner, you have to walk your dog, right? And New Jersey gets very cold in the winter and I suck at the cold. So if you want to know about me, before I had Riley, when I was living in an, my first apartment, I would set the heater to like 80 degrees in the winter so I could like <laughs> wear a tank top and wear no pants indoors. Like that's the type of person I am. That's also why a lot of people, even currently now, when they come to my house, they find it a little too hot. So yeah, that's just how I am. I hate the cold. I love the sun. I think as he kept talking to me about it and just like being willing to help me out with the move, it became very, very appealing for me. So I ended up moving and I lived with him for a month at his house. We were going to split rent. And, you know, I went into that situation thinking that it would be like very good, smooth and easy. I was actually excited about the fact that I would be able to pay less on rent because up until then I had always lived by myself, right? So when you pay as a single person to live anywhere renting, it's expensive, especially in New Jersey and San Diego. So I was just excited about the fact that living with him, I would be able to save a bunch of money by splitting rent with him. But it did not turn out the way that I um, had hoped. I also think that he perhaps had the wrong expectations for what was gonna happen. Because like, yeah, I think leading up to it, we were talking a lot about like, oh, we can go do this, we can do that. We could like do a lot of things together. and. It sounded all exciting, but I think I had not spent enough time with him in person to realize just that eventually we just don't click that way. And I'm not talking about in a dating way. I'm talking about in a friend way also because I tried really hard numerous times to meet up with him and spend time with him. And every single time I would do that, I would feel not great during the meeting and then afterwards I would feel even worse just because I was like, why do I keep doing this? I always feel the same way whenever we spend time together. And it, it really messed with me because he's just not a bad person. He's very smart. He's very successful. He's very kind. Um, he has so many good qualities and the fact that I felt like I couldn't spend time with him in person like really made me sad because I enjoyed talking to him like online. I enjoy talking to him because he he has really good. He's one of the few people that I can talk to that I feel like really, really can go deep when it comes to discussing things. So whenever I have stuff that I want to talk to him about life or this or that, I always really value what he tells me because I feel like it's great advice. It just kind of made me sad that when I try to spend time with him in person, it's not as fulfilling as I would have liked. We just kind of fell off. I do still talk to him once in a while, but I just don't really uh, see myself spending time with him much in person. Once in a while, I think is okay, but forcing it too often probably doesn't work out. But yeah, he's, he's actually like one of the only people in my life that I felt that way about where I'm just like, I, I want to spend time with you, but I'm not finding it as fun and satisfying as I would like. I guess the way I can describe it is just like when I do spend time with him, it does kind of feel like I'm, ta I'm spending time with a coworker because I, I do laugh sometimes, but um, I feel like I start to feel very distant quickly. All right, where did I leave off? I think I was talking about, okay, so, all right. Another thing that has really, really affected how I behave or just like interest in people of the outside world is when I got Riley. So um, early on when I got Riley, I was very ignorant. I didn't know shit about dogs. I didn't know anything about training. And um, I was a typical dog owner. Six to seven months later, I started learning a lot about dog training. I started um, following trainers and just like, just learning, listening to their advice, trying to figure out how I could train her better. And 
Um, a lot of it also meant where you don't just let your dog meet anybody when you're out with them. So um, that was something that frustrated me a ton because when she was younger, um, all the time when I would take her out and I would start to enforce these things, they wouldn't really listen to you. Or I just feel like um, the way that a lot of people out in the world are like, they think that they see a dog in public and they can just interact with it, just touch it, whatever. Dog in public, let me go and touch this dog. So that would happen a lot and I would get very angry over it. And I also just feel like there would be so many times where, yeah, just when you come across a bunch of idiots out in public, whether it's a dumbass with their off-leash dog, that happens all the time. I had someone at a park get mad at me for trying to keep their dog away. I used the chuck it stick. I wasn't hitting their dog. I was literally trying to nudge them away. And he ran over angry like, don't fucking hit my dog. And just like people like that, people like that, or people who come over and just try to molest Riley without asking me. Repeated instances of that made me very angry and just very put off from any sort of desire to connect with people anytime I was out. I would say that those instances have uh, faded a decent amount actually. I'm a little surprised where um, it used to happen all the time. Nowadays, maybe I'm just really good at looking like a bitch when I go out and just being like unapproachable, but that's how I try to be. Anytime I'm walking outside, I actually do this a lot and uh, it is kind of interesting, but whenever I'm with Jose, he's like, oh, did you see that guy's hair? Did you see this guy's shoes or shirt? Or like, did you see like the way this guy looked? And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't look at people. I don't look at people when I go out. When I'm walking with Riley, it, it really varies. Oftentimes though, I pretend that people are not there. Yeah, if someone is on the other side of the street with their dog, I don't even look at them. I just keep walking straight, pretend like they're not even there. And actually part of the dog training that I've taught Riley, I also take upon myself. For example, something that I teach her is that sounds and noises and stuff will happen in the world and she does not need to interact or engage with it or even react to it. So I do that too. If there's like noise and shit going on as I'm walking by, I don't even look in the direction because it has nothing to do with me. Who cares? I don't need to look at it. Riley doesn't have to worry about it. And I just kind of like apply that to a lot of stuff. So like when I'm going out, if I'm like focused on a task, I'm trying to do an errand, I'm not gonna look at people because like my goal is to do my errand and then come back like I want to be as efficient as possible with my time I'm always like that that also makes it so that it's very difficult for me to just socialize with anybody right um, I don't make myself look approachable which makes it so that few people really um, ever end up talking to me and I'm totally okay with that here's a scenario that always kind of like stumped me a little bit, bugged me, but whatever. When I first moved out of my friend's house shortly after moving here, I wanted to start up boxing because I like the idea of boxing. I actually would still do it if it wasn't so expensive, but like, I like that as cardio. Like, I think it's really cool. So I took some private lessons with somebody. I actually feel like we talked decently well in the sense that like having sessions with him was enjoyable and he was very fit. He was very tall, actually. That's another something that I tend to forget sometimes. I'm very attracted to tall people. So the fact that he was very tall, he was very fit, pretty good looking guy. So the thing is though, even if I come across people like that, I don't think like, let me date this person. I'm just like, oh, this guy is attractive and that's, that's cool. Like I'll enjoy my session with him, but after I'm done and I leave, I don't really think about them. I, I don't know, did we exchange phone numbers or something? Maybe, but just like it could be just to plan like the next lesson or I could ask him questions or whatever. But I just remember this one time out of the blue. Like, um, so my interaction with him is really inconsistent just because I feel like anytime we've ever discussed meeting up outside of our lessons, they just wouldn't happen. So I would just view him as kind of like an unreliable person. And 
I just remember one time out of the blue, I was walking Riley. I don't know how, we just ran, we, we just, like one of us, I, I think I received a message from him or maybe I sent him a message and he randomly mentioned to me that it's his birthday and I asked him what his plans were and he said that he was just gonna like have a some sort of alcoholic drink and just chill with himself and then he asked me to like meet up with him and I gave him a very <laughs> like this this whole this whole interaction like really stumped me because I was just being honest so he he asked me to meet up with him and I just told him I'm walking my dog right now and uh, I think I might have said like but I'll be available after something like that based on his response he kind of took it as a rejection and I was so confused because I was like what the fuck I'm actually walking my dog right now like I cannot immediately meet up with you but I can later I just didn't really take him seriously anyways um, and I still don't because he is basically consistently like that we would always discuss meeting up somewhere and it just wouldn't happen so anytime afterwards that I would randomly have a conversation with him and it's very very like rare now I honestly I haven't spoken to him in like probably close to two years now I just he's not he, <laughs> He's nothing to me. It, damn, if it's that hard to ever spend time with someone or meet up with them, it's probably not worth, worth your time to continue trying with them just because like it's not really meant to be. That, that instance just surprised me because I was like, holy shit, are people really that sensitive in terms of like wording and phrasing? Like I know that I am very, um, like I take wording and all of that very seriously. But the message that I sent him from my perspective did not feel like I was trying to blow him off. But clearly he thought I was. He's probably uh, one of the like only other people outside of Jose and my friend Shane that I have interacted more with around here. I really do feel like people need to consistently mm, kind of like force their way into my life because that's the uh, surprising thing about Jose. So Jose was somebody that commented on a video that I made about Riley, just showcasing our entire routine every single day, our structure. I wanted to create that video because first off, I had never seen somebody create a video like that that shows like, what do you expect out of your dog every day? in order to have them to behave well and have a good mindset. So I just filmed everything. And then he commented on that video that like, oh, this is so helpful, thank you so much. And usually for anybody that leaves a comment like that, I'm always like, yeah, if you have any questions, please ask me and I'll be happy to respond. So I think he may have followed me on Instagram and we started having some conversations on Instagram, but he mentioned one time that he was going to be in San Diego for an interview and asked to meet up. And I was really surprised about that because for me in general, like first off, the way that we met uh, through a YouTube comment, I don't take people like that seriously, right? Like I don't expect a YouTube comment person to be somebody that I meet in person. So when he suggested that, I was like, well, uh, okay, sure, we can meet. And then we met and like, it seemed fine spending a day with him. It was kind of interesting, but I didn't really think much of it. And he needed to consistently come back and spend time with me for me to actually even consider it. Like uh, he lives up near San Jose at the time. And the next time he came, oh, I forget what it was, but like he came another time to visit. We spent a day. I think he also wanted to drop by in Mexico to spend time with his dad. So it was like a few consistent trips of him coming here. He told me that he liked me. And I feel like that um, kind of stirred the idea in my head because before he told me that, I was not thinking of him romantically whatsoever. And I also didn't even, 
like we had only met a couple times in person. So I don't even know if I would have considered him a friend at that point. We were just kind of spending time together. Yeah, I wasn't thinking anything romantically until he was like, hey, I like you. And I was like, oh, fuck. Now I got to like address this. So um, honestly, unless I like somebody, every single time someone in the past has told me they liked me, I would always react that way. And I find it so funny because like <laughs> some of my old screenshots on WoW, when someone would tell me they liked me, I would, I would like message somebody else and I'd be like, oh, fuck. Somebody just told me they liked me. What do I do now? And it's always, um, I always react that way because it changes your dynamic, right? And it really messes with kind of like the ease of talking that you used to have with them. But now there's always that other thing in the back of your mind and you're like, oh man, they like me. What do I do about this? There's actually something that I want to talk about that I'm not sure fully fits in with this whole discussion, but you know what? I just wanted to create this video and ramble. But something that I find really interesting that I have not even considered much until recently, the way that I naturally am, I'm very open. I tell people personal things about me very easily and I do it just casually. But what I did not realize until recently is that when people are on the receiving end of that, they get ideas in their head that they are very meaningful to me, right? I think it's very common for people to be like, oh, you're telling me these close personal things about yourself. You must see me as someone who is very important, someone that you potentially like. I think there might be some examples where guys think that a girl likes them if she's telling the, them a lot of things. Viewing themselves as being very meaningful when all I'm doing is talking so the main thing that got me thinking about this whole scenario is my coworker because so honestly with him I I had moments where I was feeling kind of weird about it because I really enjoyed spending time with him I'll admit that um, anytime we were together we would laugh a lot a lot and I was able to be really really goofy around him and we would just laugh all the time, like make jokes, have like inside jokes. And um, there would be times where I would think to myself, I really like spending time with him, but does that mean I'm interested in him romantically? Like I remember feeling like, oh, is there a separation there? Because I don't think I have ever really had a friend that I really enjoyed being around that was a guy that I was not romantically interested in. So for him, I knew I was not physically attracted to him, but personality-wise, when he wasn't being a dick to me, I really did enjoy talking to him and spending time with him. So that kind of threw me for a loop because like, I was like, I don't know, I don't think I'm interested in, in him that way. But just like sometimes the draw of wanting to talk to him was there. One thing that he did mention to me before we completely fell off was that I think he mentioned that I would do or say certain things that based on his experience with previous women would signify something and I would assume he didn't tell me specific details but I would assume it's just my natural personality of um, just being very open I would talk to him about a lot of things I would talk to him about my exes I would talk to him about <laughs> maybe I should stop doing this I would always just talk to guys about like jokingly about porn or just like I I don't care about talking about those topics they're not off limits to me I just like blur them out sometimes yeah I think that perhaps that experience of me just overly sharing with him made him think that I felt a certain way and I've noticed it more now with people because it has happened several times. So for example, when I broke up with Jose, I was very upset, obviously. And I confided in someone that was a regular viewer on my stream. And I think randomly I did that because, you know, some people, they give off an impression that they are 
good listeners. I don't know. But um, also the way that he wrote his words and just like the stuff that he would type, it kind of reminded me of how Shane used to be like when he would tell me advice. So I'd be like, oh, he seems like he has a good head on his shoulders. He seems like he could give me good advice or he seems like he could be a good listener to help me through this. So I would talk to him a lot about what happened, um, how I felt, and just um, kind of working through things. And then maybe like two weeks after I was talking to him consistently, he told me that he liked me. And I was like, God damn it, what? It's only been two weeks and like we barely know each other. And I, I do think that part of the reason that he felt that way was because I was telling him so much stuff. But yes, there have been other instances of that where people just naturally think that I'm telling them things because they're special. And uh, I'm sorry to say that just because I tell you something doesn't mean you're special. I am just naturally very open. I'm not shy to share things. And if you want to talk to me about stuff and I just want to be a good listener also. So just because we are sharing those conversations doesn't always mean you're special. All right. Well, my camera has cut me off twice and I don't know if I can handle rambling and then getting like cut off again because honestly when I'm discussing something and the camera shuts off, it's so sad for me because I'm like, oh my God, I was just like really in the mood. And I was like on a thought process and I wanted to keep talking and talking and then it's just like, no, you're done. I feel like I have been fairly detailed in a lot of the stuff that I have wanted to discuss. Maybe it's still going to be hard to understand why I just like simply don't care. I really do think it's an innate ability of mine. I feel like it's um, coinciding with the whole ability to be lonely thing. I'm um, uh, sorry, not lonely, ability to be alone thing. Yeah, just throughout my life. I have never felt like I needed a friend or like I've never felt like, oh, I, I really want to spend time with someone. My experiences with people, those are what caused me to, what's the word? Those are what caused me to not care about people. How about that? So those caused me to not care about people, but initially just in general, I've never needed to spend time with people. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, Sammy forcing his way up here. Milo's looking all cute sleeping, but I can't show you because I'm sitting here. But anyways, thank you so much for listening. And um, 